What would it take for you to walk out of the door of your house with nothing, run through violence on the streets, and then walk to another country with no food, property, or money? To a place that is already desperately poor, where you don't speak the language. What terror would have to happen for you to do all this, leaving your three-year-old daughter behind? Horrifying accounts of human rights abuses continue to emerge from Ethiopia's northern Tigray region. The reports of atrocities and food shortages. The UN says without significant help, things could deteriorate. My name is Hafton Kidu. When I was in my country, I was living my life in good way. Just when the war is happened, I came here as refugee people. I don't have a full information about my family. And they are in life or they are tired. So in case of this one, yeah, I came here alone. In late 2020, war broke out in Ethiopia's Tigray region. Tens of thousands of people, like Haftam, fled to camps in Sudan where they remain with no prospect of going home. More than a million people are displaced inside Ethiopia, and propaganda from both sides makes it hard for outsiders to know what's going on. Phone and internet service has also mostly been cut in Tigray, and roads are often closed. When we travel through Tigray in mid-2021, families tell us they collected the bodies of civilians from the streets and buried them in mass graves. They say their homes and businesses have been looted. Hospitals are full of war injured, including children as young as four. Gabre is a farmer who owns a little bit of land and two cows in a town that has been fought over for months. After what he says was a massacre of civilians, it took him three weeks to get his daughter to this hospital. Almost all the healthcare centers in Tigray have been damaged, destroyed, or looted. Every parent we speak to here says the same thing. Their children barely survived, but they did survive. So many other children did not. Families that managed to flee across the border in early 2021 are scattered, and most refugees we meet in the camps have missing loved ones. The hardest are the people which is, have not like family, like their fathers like their mothers, like their sisters, their brothers. They leave some guys alone, you know? They eat, but they think about their family. Maybe some of them, they die. When they think about them, they become sad. This boy does not know where his family is. My father and my brothers, come to the they go to bring my brother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Michaela Haftu was an artist in Tigray before he escaped with his pregnant wife and small daughter. Oh, <laughs> Miss Atman, Stunker is not a Davana, Miss Chakata is not a Davana, Motin is the Soviet Hazel. Look at Mr. Wazna, the Himatini, Madame Himwaha, the Kisna. Atatam was through in Arena, but I don't know who in Rio Malena. Baron Zaranera, boom, yet with the animal, boom. Have you listened? Tight fatty room? In the rush to escape the war, other parents we meet lost their children. Accounting and finance. When Zafu was awarded a scholarship, her husband was angry that she would pursue her education and abandoned her. So Zafu left her daughter in Bakr with her mother while she studied and worked to support them. <laughs> ማራይሕጉስ <laughs> Every person has his own ambition. He needs to be successful. He needs to be, he need to lead his life in the best way. But when he, when he gets set back like this war, when he maybe lose, lose his lovers, his girlfriend, his family, his friends, his mother, his fathers, it becomes hopeless. Just he does not care about his life. When, when, even when he's going to be die, he don't care. Uh, even the last child is like a baby under one year old. They do not get enough water, even enough food. They may be sick, you know. No one can give for some treatment in the hospitals. When I look like this one, I feel sad, you know. Just I don't have uh, capacity, but if I have, I just I need to help them. <laughs> Christian Ethiopian refugees in Sudan celebrate the Holy Day of Epiphany.
Ethiopia is religiously diverse, but the country's divisions are seldom blamed on religious differences. This war, and so many other conflicts in Ethiopia, is between ethnic groups, or perhaps more accurately, as locals often explain, between powerful men who use ethnic divisions to stoke conflict and gain power. Johannes Nagusa is a priest who fled to Grai as bombs exploded near his home in Humara. But in Aksum, the city believed to be the birthplace of Christianity in Ethiopia. Locals tell us it is terror, not weakness, causing the chaos. <laughs> Hundreds of people were killed in Aksum as Ethiopian and Eritrean forces swept through the region. Locals told us varying details about what happened, ranging from mass shootings to house-to-house -house raids. Consistent in every person's story, however, were descriptions of so many bodies. Amnesty International later described what happened in Aksum as possible crimes against humanity. Tigray has endured many other war crimes, the organization also says. Thousands of civilians have been killed, and the economy is decimated. By mid-2021, famine was already underway, with fears emerging that hunger could be used as a weapon of war. And this is not the first time. In the 1980s, the world watched as war and famine ravaged Ethiopia. More than 300,000 Ethiopian refugees fled to Sudan then, most of them from Tigray. In the camps, many of the refugees are returning for the second time. As hard as it was then, they tell us, it is, in some ways, even harder now. Decades of war ended in 1991 with the toppling of a repressive military government. A Tigrayan military fighter, Melis Zenawi, emerged to lead a new government of ethnic federalism, which divided the country along ethnic lines. The Ethiopian economy grew fast, but political repression continued. Territorial disputes with neighbors, including the newly independent Eritrea, once part of Ethiopia, turned into armed conflict. Resentment grew of Tigrayans, who make up 6% of the population, but the Tigrayan elite 
dominated the country politically. After Melis's death in 2012, a period of unrest continued until 2018, when a young ethnic aroma, Abiy Ahmed, rose to power. He made peace with Eritrea and instituted democratic reforms, earning him a Nobel Peace Prize the following year. But when Tigray held local elections in defiance of the central government, a simmering rift quickly escalated. In November 2020, the government accused Tigrayan forces of attacking a military base and launched an offensive. The central government, backed by Eritrean forces and Amhara militias, is fighting Tigrayan regional forces and militias. Both sides have claimed the other started the war. Amhara people, they told for the Tigray, we are supporter of you. We are supporter of you, they told. And Tigray people, they told for the Amhara people, we are supporter of you. So when we come to this one, how they can make peace between them? The hostility is real but it is fueled by cyclical violence and leaders encouraging animosity for their own gain, not ancient hatreds. Tigrayan and Amhara people have lived together in peace and intermarried for as long as anyone can remember. When people get to the camps in Sudan, it is often not clear how to get shelters, food and water, or if it's available at all. Haftum rarely has extra money from the small jobs he picks up around the camps. So he tries to help people by sharing information. I need to help. Just when I help the people, my brain it gets peace, you know. You know. My brain it becomes in a good condition, you know. Even I believe. When you good thing good things, that good things it come back to you. If cannot be come back to me, they can be come back to my child. They can be come back to my family, even to all my countries. So helping for the people is the first interest of me. It's a principle he's held since before the war, when he worked to improve business and agricultural practices for farmers like his parents. But finding help is especially difficult for those who are already disabled or sick, like Michaela and his wife, who are HIV positive. Even if he could get in, Nahom says he doesn't want to stay with an organization. He says that the children are not free to roam the camp, and he's heard they don't get enough food. Haftum takes another boy, 16, who is alone in the camp to the organization. 
زوال عبد السلام زيولو قال عفهم زيلو ميلم سام حلف من تايك عفهم زيلو مو and he too is told they have as many children as they can support. So he, he has not family. They say it for us. We cannot do anything now. Even Hafton, who positions himself as someone to help the most vulnerable, sees no future for himself here in the camp, in Sudan, or in returning to Tigray. I lose my home, even my document. Just I have already graduated. Just when I go back to my home, really I cannot get my document. Really, they already burn out. They, they can throw it on the road. Just that give me like hopeless, like this, disappointed. Kau Abdi Salam koi ni lagan Abdi. أتينا، أو عاد أتينا أنتنا وقع عاد أبو مالت تزنا ورنا حزنا زعتنا غيرنا تقيح مسكر زهرتنا غيرنا تعاقمنا داقمين يقع تفنا قلنا قد محجونا دي حوات سينا كم زنات يتحرك حجونا بعيد تدقيمة سلزي نترخي بيومون دك حزنا وزق متصبر أو هنا برد لنا تبلي World leaders have accused all parties, the Ethiopian military, the Eritrean military, and militias associated with the Tigray and Amhara parties of human rights abuses. But government forces and their allies have been accused of mass murders, forced removals, and ethnically motivated violence, including systematic mass rape. Hundreds of women and girls from across Tigray have reported being raped by soldiers. And aid workers say there are likely many, many more who have kept silent out of fear, shame, or just lack of access to any kind of health care. The stories they tell us are eerily similar. Soldiers came to their houses, demanding to know where a husband, father, or brother was, insisting he was a rebel fighter. When the man did not appear, a wife, daughter, or sister was attacked. كأوبرت حزام أبا خمل الشاي برت مسيلا مفر الحمني أنا يفضي مسقط ميو لي يوم لما نكون هم الخدا أنا الفضي أنا قريب لك كأسرع وقت مستقفة يلي يدرش لي فضي كأسرع وقت يتقام صوتا أو بعموته كأتنا إذا عميتهم ذا على عند تخ خلاله كأتما ليسهم ما يلي نيرا له ما يلي حزام كخيده The Ethiopian government has arrested dozens of soldiers accused of rape, but has mostly been silent on the issue. The government has also acknowledged many other abuses, but blames Tigrayan forces, who it designated a terrorist organization. For many refugees, returning to Tigray is not an option. Some fear the conflict could even spread to the camps. <laughs> After the television, we saw the general government of the Rights organizations and other leaders have called upon the Ethiopian government to hold peace talks. But the conflict continues as alarming reports of extreme hunger and famine emerge amid fears the humanitarian crisis will continue to deepen. Almatiwo, let's go, 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 let